good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the White House. Yay! Yeah. 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 See, I always have to loosen you guys up. You're in the White House, you're a little stiff. But let me just take a moment to notice these nice chairs. Pretty nice. This is a new addition to the luncheon. Those of you who've been here, this is a round of applause. <laughs> Well, it is truly a pleasure to be here with all of you today as we celebrate the 15th anniversary of the National Design Awards. And I have been fortunate enough to be here for, this is my sixth year uh, that we've had the pleasure of hosting this event here in the East Room. And every year, I truly look forward to learning more about the honorees. I mean, I get to read everything, but then every now and then I get to sit down and talk to you guys. and actually learn a little bit about how you do what you do. And what I discover is that these men and women are some of the most daring and creative minds in, in the world. Uh, from a designer at Google who's using data and crowdsourcing to create art that will take your breath away. Uh, to the former Hollywood set designers who are now creating some of the most unique buildings and interiors that you'll ever see. And they like each other, I think. <laughs> and then there's this fashion designer whose parents tried to convince him to be a, a lawyer or a doctor or a dentist or something like that. And I, I'm sure that I speak uh, for all women uh, <laughs> when I say that I'm grateful that Narciso chose another path. <laughs> <laughs> And it's that idea of a path, uh, a life's journey, that I'd like to spend just a moment uh, reflecting on. Because every year at this event, I love asking our honorees how they ended up in these cool careers in the first place. And, and more often than not, they tell me some crazy, quirky, interesting story about uh, a string of coincidences that led them here today, a uh, chance meeting, that turned into a partnership or business, a passion that no one ever dreamed they could actually make a living from, um, a mentor, a teacher, a family member who sort of led them uh, into the career. And as we reflect on the obstacles and all the zigzags and false starts that the folks uh, we honor in this room have faced, I, I also want us to ask ourselves a, a few questions. What can we do to help smooth the path for those who come after? How do we make sure that our young people know about these careers? I think about that all the time. You know, who knows that you can do the stuff you do? They don't teach it in school. Uh, and we don't want to leave it to luck or coincidence or chance to allow the next generation to make their dreams come true. And more importantly, what are we doing to prepare the next generation uh, for the op opportunities that we do create for them. How are we reaching our young people where they are in a way that really moves them and inspires them to commit to their education and fulfill uh, their, their boundless promise? Because in this age, as you know, and I've got teenagers, uh, <laughs> when our kids are always buried in some screen or device, uh, what I've learned is that we can't just lecture them anymore. They tune us out. <laughs> it happens every night at dinner. It's so sad. <laughs> We've got to really engage them and find ways for them to interact with us in new ways and with the world around them. And that's why I am so excited about the new Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, which will reopen in December. Uh, because you all are embracing the technology of the next generation in some really exciting ways. Um, I haven't got a chance to see it. I'm going to come visit when it's open, but I understand that you're giving everyone who enters this new museum an inter interactive pen that they can use to download information from ultra-high-definition exhibition tables, which means that essentially a visitor can record their visit and then share and view it online long after they, they leave the museum, which is really kind of cool. Uh, you're also creating something called an immersion room, uh, where a visitor can choose from hundreds of different wallpapers and patterns, or they can create something of their own and then instantly project them 
onto the walls around them. And then, of course, there's all the wonderful work that you're doing outside of the museum that I am so proud of. Uh, you're sponsoring teen design fairs and uh, allowing kids to meet with experts where they get feedback and they learn from some of the best in the world. And you're supporting budding designers with your Design Prep Scholars program uh, that's in DC and New York. And as usual, I got a chance to meet that group before I came into the room. And I want us to just take a moment. I want all those young scholars to please stand so that we can acknowledge you. You can sit down now. <laughs> We're very proud of you guys, and I've heard some really exciting things about the workshops earlier today, and hopefully you all learned something too. But here's what I want you to think about. Your mind, your creativity got you into the White House. Remember that. <laughs> so you can do anything, all right? This is pretty cool, right? Well, we're very proud of you, and we're proud um, of everything that Cooper Hewitt is doing, because the truth is you all get it. Uh, you really do. You know that it's not enough to simply celebrate the best design in America today. Uh, you know that we've got to really cultivate the best designers of tomorrow as well. Um, and it is uh, an honor uh, that during the special anniversary that we're here at the White House, uh, that I'm able to thank you all once again for everything you do, um, the, everything you do to make this world a better, more fun and interesting place and what you're doing uh, to pass on that passion and imagination and commitment to our next generation. Uh, it is truly a treat and an honor for me. So thank you all and congratulations. And now it is my pleasure to introduce someone else who knows a thing or two about reaching out to our young people. Uh, under his leadership, the Smithsonian has used technology and educational programming to open up the museums, uh, exhibitions, and artifacts to more people than ever before. And my daughters are among those, uh, those young people. And while we are sad to see his time as Secretary of the Smithsonian end in just a few months, we're pleased to have him here for this event one last time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome my dear friend, Dr. Wayne Clough. My goodness. Uh, thank you, Ms. Obama, for that wonder wonderful introduction and once again being such a gracious host. As was mentioned, this is my last year. And she and I have never missed one of these events together, so I'm going to miss that myself. But what's really amazing about the First Lady is she loves the Smithsonian in many ways, uh, and of course we love her daughters in many ways at the Smithsonian. Uh, but she's been a supporter of the Smithsonian from day one. And for that, we thank you and we're very grateful. Well, this is the 15th anniversary of this program established by Cooper Hewitt to promote design's impact on shaping the world as we know it. Bruce Mao, one of our outstanding jurors, explains it like this. From birth until death, everything we interact with, from buildings to transportation to information, is a design experience. And we have many such experiences to celebrate today. The celebration was in full swing at the Ripley Center on the National Mall this morning, where Cooper Hewitt held its team design fair that you heard about. To everyone who made this valuable and inspiring event possible, we say thank you. 300 plus teens met with designers and education to discuss careers in design, and I'm sure their lives were all changed as a result of that. And the great 12 who are here with us, again, I congratulate you on your success and your great career. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the continued support of Target. And our friends of Target, Laisha, would you have the folks from Target who are here please stand up and be recognized? Yeah. 
Target has supported our National Design Award programming, and since 1946, they've generously given 5% of their profits year in and year out to local communities. Today, that equals more than $4 million a week. They're also on track to reach $1 billion in educational contributions by the end of 2015 as part of their commitment to education. This includes Target's substantial support of Cooper Hewitt's Design Education Center in Harlem, which is a fabulous center, the Target Design in the Classroom program, which we're spreading to the country, and other Smithsonian education programs. Many thanks as well to Procter & Gamble, Design Without uh, Beach, and Facebook for their support. I'd also like to acknowledge the ongoing partnership between Cooper Hewitt and Smithsonian Magazine to bring you the People's Design Award again this year. So log on to smithsonian.com and vote for your favorite design from the 20 nominees. They're impressive. Mushroom building blocks, a bionic arm, a health sensor, a new tourniquet, designs that literally deal with life and death. And I applied all the designers, but I must admit that as a former president and alumnus of Georgia Tech, I was taken by the PHL gloves to help with teaching of Braille through passive learning that were designed by researchers at Georgia Tech's <laughs> School of Internet Interactive Computing. Far be it for me to influence your vote, however, the vote as you see. Well, we'll announce the winner live at our gala coming up in New York City on October the 9th as part of the great award ceremony. Finally, a special thanks to all of you today, your award winners. Your work informs, engages, and inspires all of us in unique and, and compelling ways. An important contribution to the evolution of our design consciousness and indeed our society. It's also a fitting description of Cooper Hewitt, the only museum in the country described, de dedicated exclusively to historic and contemporary design. Its home in the Carnegie Mansion has undergone, as the First Lady mentioned, a monumental and exciting renovation. And when the doors reopen on December the 12th, visitors will be able to interact with design like never before. This museum is going to be the first at the Smithsonian to digitize its entire collection, and that's underway. Before Cooper Hewitt's visionary director, Caroline Bowman, recognizes our 2014 National Design Award winners, I want to recognize her for her leadership in reinventing the Cooper Hewitt. Caroline is literally rewriting the history of Cooper Hewitt with a very special pen that she'll tell you about. Caroline? Thank you so much. Thank you, Wayne, and thank you, Mrs. Obama, for helping us highlight the pervasive impact of design on our lives. We are greatly honored to have your continued patronage and support. Thank you. Good design is the convergence of art and science, of form and function, and human need in order to create meaning for individuals, communities, and the world at large. Ulti ultimately, design is about making an experience, carving out a vision of what can be. And that is what we are celebrating today. I'd like to second the Secretary's acknowledgement of Target's generosity. Target's partnership has enabled us to maintain and grow our incredible education programs nationwide. Thank you. In Harlem, our Cooper Hewitt Design Center has welcomed over 35,000 students, families, and educators since it opened just two years ago. And our Design in the Classroom initiative has brought the importance of design to over 60,000 underserved public school students in New York City, as well as in Cleveland, Minneapolis, New Orleans, San Antonio, and right here in Washington, D.C. We are incredibly happy to be here on this 15th anniversary of the National Design Awards, celebrating the outstanding achievements of our nation's most talented designers, especially at this milestone time in Cooper Hewitt's history. As the Secretary mentioned, for the past three years, we have been in the throes of a mammoth construction project, as well as a complete reinvention. The new Cooper Hewitt is all about interactivity and access, supporting our mission to educate, inspire, and empower people through design. Using cutting edge technology, we are bringing design and the design process to life like never before. One of the ways we're doing this is with our interactive pen that you've just heard about. 
The pen is a tool that will allow everyone who enters our doors to collect, create, and play designer. Through scintillating digital experiences throughout the museum, visitors will have unparalleled access to our diverse collection, over 210,000 objects spanning over 30 centuries, and the ability to actively participate in the design process. Our vision for a reinvigorated Cooper Hewitt is to create an environment in which people can engage with design in a powerful new way. And I can't wait to welcome you all back in just 73 days. And yes, we are counting. <laughs> it's now my great pleasure to recognize the 2014 National Design Award winners who are here with us today. This year's jury selected honorees are design visionaries. By combining technology, materials, and storytelling into creative solutions to the challenges we face, their ideas have made an impact not only in their own fields, but also in our communities. Please do hold your applause until all of the winners have been recognized. Ivan Shermayev and Tom Geismar, who have been pioneering idea-driven graphic design since 1958, creating many of the world's most iconic and recognizable trademarks. Brooks and Scarpa for marrying an innovative aesthetic with leadership in sustainable and socially progressive design. Office for communication design that is grounded in smart strategy and executed in unexpected ways. Narcisa Rodriguez, who has redefined American style for the past two decades with his elegantly minimal fashion. Aaron Koblen for pioneering new interfaces in crowdsourcing and data visualization, exploring the changing relationship between humans and the data they create. Roman and Williams Buildings and Interiors, whose aesthetic synthesizes diverse time periods, cultures, and styles to impact residential and commercial spaces. Andrea Cochran, Landscape Architecture, for emphasizing the experiential and material quality of the built landscape. And Lunar, whose cutting edge products for leading global brands spanning consumer, technology, and life science markets are as beautiful as they are functional. Please stand so we can acknowledge all of your outstanding contributions to the nation. Congratulations to this year's National Design Award winners. These innovative, public-minded designers have raised the design bar. Their work, your work, changes how we look at the world and how we live our daily lives. I look forward to celebrating with all of you at the official awards ceremony on October 9th. Thank you all for being here, and thank you again, Mrs. Obama. You are truly a champion of American innovation and your incredibly inspiring remarks underscore the power that design has to uplift and connect us all. Thank you. <laughs>